Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Join this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter for your awesome chat for this week. And of course, please go check us out at awesomecast.net. Uh, sign up for all the ways you can subscribe, audio and video formats, iTunes, YouTube, all the places. And check out past episodes. we got a lot of great, great interviews from the Pittsburgh area and beyond and technology and social media and, and just doing some, some cool, awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, in this field, uh, so uh, so today we uh, we got somebody uh, back on the show. He's he was back way back in the day on Awesome Cast from uh, Work Hard Pittsburgh, the former hardware store. It may have been listed as on then. Josh Lucas joining us talk, to talk about Academy Pittsburgh. Are you are you selfieing here on the podcast? <laughs> no, I, I'm tweeting I'm tweeting the live stream because that is you know cool and important. There you go, there you go. Josh Lucas joining us. How you doing? I am fantastic and multitasking like a pro. There's a picture of Sorg. <laughs> now I'm going to change the filter. I'm going to crop it down a little. Okay, I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm good, Michael. How are you, sir? Excellent, excellent. So, yeah, we wanted to have you back on, but but just as a, a quick recap, we're at Work Hard Pittsburgh. Why, by the way, Sorgatron Media has has moved into a desk over at Work Hard Pittsburgh as well. Uh, uh, give people a quick reminder. What What is the space? What is the What is the stuff about up there? Well, many years ago, Michael, in, in 2012, we started uh, a little co-working space in the Pittsburgh neighborhood of Allentown uh, called The Hardware Store. And we have since rebranded because it's no longer just a co-working space. It's, it's, it's more of what we see as a, a business incubation ecosystem. So, you know, we still provide physical space for people. We still provide a community for people to come together uh, as freelancers and try to share resources and share job opportunities and share clients. Uh, but we're getting more and more into the nuts and bolts of what we see as important things that need to happen in town so that more business people, more different kinds of business people can be successful. Awesome. And I think I want to touch a little bit on that uh, later here in the show if we can. Uh, but the big thing I want you back for is uh, you just launched Academy <clears> Pittsburgh. <throat> you can check it out yourself over at uh, academypgh.com. Uh, so tell me about the concept behind this. It's been really intriguing. Well, I mean, I think that what we've seen in town uh, and what we believe to be the truth of it is, is that it's really hard to find entry-level software engineering talent here in town. And that might seem kind of uh, contradictory because there's such great universities, right? We have CMU and Pitt and, and Chatham and, and Carlo and all and Duquesne, all creating the, these, these kids that are really good at writing code. But the, but the problem is that they don't stick around, uh, especially early in their career. So if you're a startup, or if you're a young company, or if you are a big company and you're looking to hire uh, someone at, at the entry level point in their career, it's, it's actually pretty hard to do. And, and oftentimes we're seeing uh, folks have to go out of town to find the talent that they need to move their business forward. So what Academy Pittsburgh does is it offers a 12-week condensed training course that can turn someone into a junior level front end web developer. And the way that's being built out is so that no matter where you are in your education or no matter where you are in your career, you could come and do this programming, this boot camp, uh, as they're called nationally, uh, and get a leg up and, and get a bunch of experience that's going to make it easy for you to transition into uh, becoming a, an engineer, a software engineer. That's awesome. That's awesome. We think so. <laughs> and this is this is something like, <clears throat> what is this something that I come out of college and this further prepares me or is this something in lieu of college if I want to target something in particular like what are like who who is this program for I think it's it, it there's a broad swath of people it's appropriate for it, it's really about it's really about giving practical skills uh, so wrapped into that are um, basically everything you would need to go join a, an engineering team a software team so when we approach the curriculum that is in place for, for Academy, and, and, and by the way, that curriculum is open source, so we're going to share that out with the, with the region and the world. Um, it's not just teaching you how to code, but it's teaching you soft skills that you need to be a productive member of an engineering team. It's teaching you how to read a customer technical specification. It's teaching you how to work as a team. It's teaching you how to have a project manager. So the, the people that are appropriate for this kind of, this kind of learning are, are folks that are kind of looking for the nuts and bolts the tangible, practical skills that they need to do the day-to-day -day operation 
of, of what a software engineer might do. So we're seeing a lot of people that are transitioning into new careers. We're seeing some people that are just about to go into college uh, trying to sort of get a, a more fundamental and a better grasp of, of fundamental practical things before they go into the theoretical work that, that they'll do their freshman and junior year. Uh, and, and we're seeing everyone from 19 to 65 sort of interested in, in getting these skills and, get, and getting this done in this manner, in this sort of short time frame condensed training program. Awesome. Awesome. And, and, uh, and you also don't have just this program. You have some other boot camps going on as well. Yeah. I mean, we, we kind of look at the market and for the last two years, we've been providing a lot of trainings. A lot of the time that those trainings uh, were free or, or super low cost to the community. Um, but the demand is there. They're, they're, the way the economy is, is changing and the way that people need to have a variety of skills uh, to be competent at their job, whether those skills are in digital marketing or those skills are, you know, in social media or in front end web development or, e or even something like WordPress, you know, there has to be a quick, easy way to, to get those skills. And, and we don't think that for most people, a four year college is probably not appropriate. It's right. just, it just right. doesn't practically doesn't make any sense. So everything that we instruct in the academy uh, and, and, and everything that we offer out of the academy of Pittsburgh is kind of has that general, um, aesthetic about it. It's just like, what is the thing that you need to get better at your job, to do your job better, or to create more economic opportunity for yourself? And it sounds like something that can be a little more flexible. Like, I know, I know, uh, I, I did some adjunct work with the uh, Pittsburgh Technical Institute, for instance. I know you have a teaching background as well. I do. Um, and, and you, you know, we know that the, the curriculum takes, it, it's like steering that big ship, you know, and, and while I think something like PTI, they do a very good job, I think, they of do. listening. Um, it does take a while to implement the things, <clears throat> you know, I mean, you're dealing on that quarter cycle mm -hmm. and then to get it past whatever approval processes to bring it into the curriculum. Yeah. It, 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 I saw a little bit of that developing in that by probably a year and a half there um, and, and seeing how those movements go. Mm -hmm. And and I can definitely see where a, a lighter mm -hmm. uh, uh, curriculum like this that can move and adapt to that a little bit more can be a little more advantageous. Yeah, so I would say that the belief that we have is that education is changing rapidly and the old systems that are uh, necessarily bureaucratic are, aren't able to adapt. So what we hope to do and what we think is the valuable thing to do is sort of let market forces dictate what's being taught. So we spent the last three or four months heavily surveying not just employers, but foundations and nonprofits and, and asking them, like, what are the skills that you need right now? And the great thing is in six months, we can ask that question again, or in three months, we can ask that question again. Or mm -hmm. if somebody comes out of the blue and says, hey, we need this particular thing taught to our employees uh, next month, we have the network and sort of the, the framework and process in place where we're going to be able to spool in new courses really rapidly to really, really, really address what, what the need is in market. Um, and with that comes economic opportunity, not just for Academy of Pittsburgh, but with a whole slew of experts in the city who can be the instructors for those courses. And this is something I, I had a kind of a similar talk about this last week on my basic economics show, which was actually spun from an idea that I got from Refresh Pittsburgh and then these guys Sparkbox, I believe, are in Columbus, Ohio, uh -huh. um, and they had a really interesting idea of making sure you know <clears throat> you're talking about we need people ready to hire here locally. And they kind of had an internal internship program to say, this is how we do things. These are the skills we need. And it was kind of a zero to 60 over the course. Like, you know, you can come in with about nothing and be ready for, to be potentially hired by us or at least be somebody we know we can work with out in the industry. And it sounds like, like this is supplanting that so people don't have to take something like that inter internally necessarily. Yeah, this isn't our idea, right? Like this no, is, no, 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 of this, course. This of is course. something that boot code boot camps have been going on all over the country for for a half a decade probably. They've really yeah. gained momentum in the last two or three years. Um, and so what we're, what we're doing is looking at those code academies who have ridiculous success stories and some have upwards of 92% job placement rates nice. after graduation. The average starting salary nationally for a graduate out of a code boot camp is $75,000. And nationally, the average job placement, or let me, let me phrase it this way, nationally, 75% uh, of people that graduate code boot camps immediately transition to a job where they use that skill. So some of that's part-time work and some of that's full-time work. But the statistics are, and, and the, the data behind these things uh, is, is very um, life-affirming. We'll go, we'll go. It's very optimistic. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to learn from what other people have done in other markets. But we're also uniquely aware of, of what Pittsburgh is and how Pittsburgh uh, 
business works and, and are doing our best to kind of rally support around this idea that a local company can provide this invaluable resource uh, and, and hopefully folks are going to buy in. Awesome. Awesome. So, so you know, you got a, 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 a menagerie of stuff mm-hmm. over at academypgh.com. Like you said, the digital design, social media, uh, even game development from our friends over at uh, Looking for right. Group. Right. We, talk we should talk about Looking for Group and John at, at some point, too. Oh, certainly. Oh, certainly. Yeah, uh, especially in regard to the Academy. Okay. Well, right, well let's touch on that right now. Uh, so, so I was, I was, I was, I was, I was awesome to see like some game stuff, and I know they were talking about doing education when we had them on before, and it was great to see you guys kind of connect up. And yeah. I keep running. You're hanging out at the back room of my parties that I'm having <laughs> up there uh, when we're celebrating the 10 years of Wrestling Mayhem show last yeah. week. Um, you know, but, uh, but how did that come together, and, and how is that kind of rolling into this with Academy? So, so what's important about Academy is that it, it, when it's mature and when it's fully grown out, and if it's successful – It'll be providing sustainability for two really important organizations in, in, the, in the South Hills, in the, in the Hilltop neighborhoods, and in the Southern Pittsburgh neighborhoods. So John Langren's looking for group, and you had these guys on recently? Uh, I, think, I think they may have been open a week or a week before opening, like somewhere around yeah. when they just kicked open uh, in, 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 up there in Brookline. Yeah, so right in the middle of Brookline, there's a great co-working space with an emphasis on gaming and game development, uh, and John Lang runs that. He's a... He's a, he's a very schooled, sophisticated web developer. He's been around for years. He's done a lot of enterprise level work. And uh, through a mutual connection, uh, we've been able to get together and start building the Academy Pittsburgh uh, together for the benefit of both of our organizations. So Academy Pittsburgh is not just a work hard Pittsburgh project. Uh, John, who, who runs Looking for Group, is, is the guy who's writing the curriculum, who's going to be instructing the first boot camp uh, in, on April 18th, I believe, is the start date for that boot camp now. So without John, none of this would be happening uh, because we need his technical expertise uh, very much so, I would say. So he's very, very important to pay uh, to give those guys some recognition in this whole process. They're That's very, very crucial part of the puzzle. That's awesome, and I, I, I think it's really cool. You know, having them on, it was it was nice to see like there was some kind of co-working space action happening mm-hmm. and, and something different within that and that kind of thing <clears throat> that I really kind of took you know as like the gaming virtual work hard really. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and to see this thing kind of extending out to the South Hills. Yeah. You know where I think there's a lot of potential down down this way. Yeah. Um. So uh, can you speak a little bit about that and kind of like yeah. you know, working well, the area and maybe we can talk a little bit more about like what you guys are doing up in Allentown in particular. Yeah, you know, we, we've said these things before, and people, I think, know our rhetorical position at this point, but for the city to be healthy, uh, for a region to be healthy, you need to have economic opportunities dispersed throughout the region. You, you can't consolidate, and you can't make all the smart people and all the rich people and all the wealthy people and all the talented people uh, reside just in one neighborhood. That, that's really bad for an entire city. So anything that we can do here in the southern neighborhoods that adds capacity, that makes it a destination, that... Uh, convinces people that there's real sophistication out here and real people doing uh, important technical and sophisticated work uh, is good for the entire region. And then, you know, we want to see that in Millville and we want to see that in in Uptown and we want to see that in all of these neighborhoods that have been neglected for the last 20, 30 years. And and that's a lot of the work that we do up in Allentown. Uh, We've been graciously supported by the Hillman Foundation to do some of that work. Academy Pittsburgh uh, is partially funded by a a Hillman Foundation grant. And we're also extending the freelance community that that works out of Work Hard Pittsburgh in delivering brick and mortar businesses in the East Warrington Corridor with, with, with digital services. So we're building some websites and we are, and that's Pittsburgh Tall. That's that little thing on the side you just had up. Uh, that's the name of the program, Pittsburgh Tall. And we're doing some SEO marketing and we're teaching people how to do Google ad buys. And uh, we're doing even some physical improvements uh, with the Hillman money, all as part of what we see as incubation services for brick and mortar for everyday entrepreneurs, uh, not just for, for tech entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and, and I've seen it um, um, since going up there. The, the, I think I attended one of your first open houses yeah. before the thing was even open. <laughs> Crazy and, back then. <laughs> and, and, and like half the studio was like a room, <clears throat> yeah. and, you know, and, 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 you know, that wasn't even built out yet. And there's just a couple of microphones in there. Uh-huh. Um, and to see that develop over time has been really cool. And just seeing, um, you know, uh, Allentown definitely needs a, a, a bit further to go. But but still, sure. it looks a lot different than it did two years yeah. ago. And, you know, uh, you know, from from, you know. 
the business is up there to just the look up there from, yeah. from, from it, it doesn't feel like and i know i, I try to bring up people up there and bring have my meetings up there in the space um one make them aware of the space and two kind of not be afraid of the neighborhood much like here in beachview i try to say hey come up to this awesome coffee shop right. up the hill from me you know hey you know there's stuff in this neighborhood and we can completely just hang out here and and and, and that's good to go you know so yeah, well right and and you know we have and to the credit of the Hilltop Alliance in, in Siena, who's our business district manager, we've we've gotten a nice retail and restaurant uh, growth growth in re- retail and restaurant. He's worked it out. So we have Leon's Caribbean. We have a new um, child's children's upscale clothing store. We have Spool, which does uh, sewing and and uh, makers kind of space for for people that like to sew and, and do quilts and stuff like that. So. Really rapidly, and, and that's really the scary part, right? Like really rapidly in just a year or two, the neighborhood has changed dynamically. Uh, and now the question is, how do you do that responsibly? How do you keep it heterogeneous? How do you keep it inclusive? How do you stop outside developers from coming and buying huge swaths of land and turning it into, you know, Starbucks or Target or Walmart? Not that that would be a, a horrible thing, but th- those are the kind of things that displace people. And we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that as much as we can, encourage responsible thoughtful methodical economic redevelopment up there as well awesome awesome um so what, what else is coming up here anything else about academy pittsburgh work hard that you think people <clears throat> should be uh, knowing about you guys that have coming up here well i, I that's a good question <laughs> i mean our focus is academy. i know you're everywhere <laughs> i i you, you were at one meeting and then and then i i saw you were at a meeting my wife was at the other day in like east liberty you're like you're all over the place it seems yeah that's so. unfortunately uh, my job description is uh Chief Executive Connector of Dots, or or something like that. Like I don't, I <laughs> the don't. The networker. Know. He's the networker. Yeah, in, I don't, in I don't have any real actual skills, so they just send me out in the wild to try to make people uh, excited about the work we're doing. I mean, the real focus for the next so, few months. So, so, so head cheerleader. Head cheerleader. Yeah. <laughs> I have to. Yeah, I'd look. I'd look great in, in that outfit. I suspect. I mean, maybe that should be Halloween. Um, you know, the focus is Academy for the next two three months. Uh, yeah. That's um, crucial to our sustainability over the next five years. So we need to make sure that that. Academy class is full. Uh, the Pittsburgh Tall stuff I mentioned, which is is programmatic and delivering resources to small businesses. Uh, we're extending some of that into the neighborhoods now. Millvale and uh, Northside are also um, getting a year of content from us. So two pieces of content a month to help retell the narrative and the story of a neighborhood. Awesome. So that's either a video or a podcast or a blog with, with a photographer. And we're going out twice a month and getting these guys on a on a schedule so that they can take control of the information and, 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 and what's happening and, and tell the, tell Pittsburgh, the greater Pittsburgh so region you, what's happening. You're really, we're, you're really helping to kind of rebrand these neighborhoods. That's the hope, right? Like yeah. we want to take the lessons learned in Allentown and, and we want to do this in all these neighborhoods that are transitioning and that are looking for economic growth. And we think that if we do that in 10 or 12 or 15 neighborhoods, at the end of that, we're going to have a great feature piece about economic redevelopment in Pittsburgh. And we're going to be able to stitch together all these different pieces of media that we created to help retell the stories uh, into something that is documentary worthy and, 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 and maybe we'll take it and shop it around some of the film festivals and stuff like that. That's awesome. So that program just started uh, and we're doing, we just started in Millville and we're going to start here in, in the North side in a little bit. And there's some other neighborhoods that have expressed an interest, but they haven't pulled the trigger on it. And we're doing that um, for essentially no money. I mean, we're doing that for what breaks down to be about $140 per piece of content. So that might sound like a lot, but to make a two-minute video or to send somebody out with a photographer to write a blog uh, and capture something that's going on, that, that's really affordable. Oh, yeah. And, and to spread that all over the year, it only works out to be you know, a couple grand, 2500 bucks to do that. So we're really excited about that because one of the things Pittsburgh needs to work on is telling its story. And we've heard that at, at, the, uh, at the city government level, at the foundation level. We've heard that so many times. Uh, and this is how you do that. You, you just make more content. And it doesn't always have to be the best, amazing, most piece of content in the world. Sometimes it just needs to be something that's short and captures a story. And authentic. And authentic and real yeah. and, and, and showing something valuable. And that's not hard to do and that's not expensive to do. We just got to get more people doing it. Awesome, awesome. So, okay, so it's been a while since we first talked to you about everything going on up there. <clears throat> uh, what has been kind of the biggest surprise? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, you know, whether a story that you come across, somebody that you help, somebody that you know, uh, something something along the lines that that uh, through this process really kind of like, oh wow, that's something that came from this program or one of these programs or these many things that you're cheerleading. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I think that it's it's its own perpetual momentum. So nothing makes me happier than seeing things happen at Work Hard Pittsburgh that I have nothing to do with, right? Like that people have uh, figured out a way to leverage the, the amount of resources and capacity that we build up there to take steps forward for their own projects and their own, and their own businesses. And so that's super exciting. Super exciting. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, again, where can everybody find information on all this stuff going on? Uh, at WorkHardPGH on Twitter and then at AcademyPGH on Twitter. And then workhardpgh.com, and then academypgh.com, and then there's probably some Facebooks there too that you could suss out if you're really super fanboying us up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of events up there, a lot of things going on. So definitely get on the the meetup groups and everything. It, yeah, it, yeah. You get a chance to to learn something, to meet new people. Uh, we're doing we're starting the starting up our Circuit Tribe Media Coffees and yep. bringing people in. And we had a great talk with uh, uh, Buzzy and our friends from the podcast, uh, podcast. Pittsburgh Podcast uh, Network, <laughs> bringing bringing all the podcast <laughs> minds together and all yeah. our friends in our network and and trying to grow that out. A well, little and, bit. and that's exactly what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Like to see you guys and, and, and Epicast and the podcast uh, network guys, mm-hmm. like all figuring out ways to come together and get critical mass like that's unbelievably important in the city and and the work that you guys that you do personally mike is is super important in documenting all these moments in time of people's entrepreneurial adventures or their nonprofit adventures that's so valuable to the community and and folks don't spend enough time uh giving folks like you credit for that work because it's i know how time consuming it is we do it it sucks it's just eats up your whole day so you know that's it's awesome man good job Thanks. Thanks a lot, man. Uh, so go check out Josh Lucas. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Awesome Chat. And uh, you can check out everything, all the past interviews of uh, uh, like this and uh, talking about Pittsburgh people, talking about some of those companies coming up and talking about some other cool stuff and gadgets we got from other cities once in a while, too. Uh, over at AwesomeCast.net, subscribe to this, subscribe to the main Awesome Cast. And if you're listening this week, we got somebody else actually from the, the I think I ran into it at the hardware store. Uh, Martyr on the Move is going to be joining us on the Awesome Cast. I believe that's uh, 282 is the episode number and uh, a couple other awesome things from the pittsburgh area uh thank you to our awesome guest josh lucas you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com